Hi everyone! The earthquakes keep coming in Italy, in southern Italy, in the greater Naples area where there's this super dangerous super volcano Campi Flegri. So one swarm after the other and we basically had an earthquake every day and then seismic swarm seismic swarm with the biggest one in may 20th with 4.4 and you know guys there's new information they keep saying that the 4.4 was the largest in 40 years but you know the ones that they had in um, in the 80s was supposed to be only 4.0 so it seems this is the largest in a way longer time frame not only 40 years so this is significant and this tells us something so the poor residents especially in the little fishing town of Pozzoli were rattled again and of course these earthquake swarms keep panicking them because they don't know what's going on this Brady seism how it's called so so these earthquakes are coming with a land rise the land is lifting up um, and that's definitely scary because that of course puts pressure on the buildings the foundations and the port of Pozzoli because if the ground keeps rising then the port the level of water keeps lowering so the swarm started last night so during the night um, and there were tremors between 1.6 and 2.0, so higher than the last few days. So up to 2.0, that is something again. Um, late this morning, Italian time, the Vesuvius Observatory said that this swarm seems to be over for now, so on June the 24th morning time in Italy. So most of the tremors were recorded between four and six in the morning. And it was, were about like 22 earthquakes above magnitude one. And seven of those had an intensity even greater than one and up to magnitude two in maximum value. So, the strongest one was seems to be the last one or one of the last ones. Um, it happened precisely at 6.15 in the morning. So people were probably still sleeping while they were probably awake because they also felt the other ones. They were quite shallow and especially the 2.0 one was quite shallow so they could really feel it. And these earthquakes always, how they describe it, they come with a roar, with a sound that is really like a missile coming into your living room like it starts with like zzz, and then boof it rattles everything and then your glasses and your closets they start shaking and rumbling it was distinctly felt by the population and there were quite a few reports from the population that they really felt it and uh, they were even more superficial than the others that we've seen there um it seems they did not cause damage, physical damage to the buildings or to structures, but they did cause the usual fright that has been caused by all these earthquakes since this period of earthquake swarms began and especially since uh, May 20th when it was such a large one and scientists guys they have said since then well they have to expect an even larger one up to magnitude 5 something in that range the Brady seism is continuing the land is still rising steadily at a rate of two centimeters per month so early April it was only one centimeter per month so it has doubled and so because of this Brady seism the Minister of Civil Defense we've heard about him or from him in my last video. It's quite an interesting one, what he says about the politician. He, he blames the politicians for the problems that are arising now for all these people that live in these densely populated areas. So they have approved a decree on seismic risk and they wanna hire a commissioner within the next 15 days that should supervise all that's going on related to the Brady seism. So Minister Nello Musumeci has announced that the management of the interventions 
um, will be entrusted to a commissioner that will be identified by the government um, and examined by the region. So he is doing something. He's realizing they need to get up to date with their emergency plans, with their planning, with everything. They should not delay this and they should not wait long. And also, of course, it involves bringing the structures up to date with the seismic codes, because, of course, this is all that they can do, right? At least, you know, prevent buildings from collapsing, rocks from falling, roofs from falling, stucco from falling down, whatever, if these earthquakes are happening. So they want to upgrade public buildings and they want to upgrade private buildings. And there's a little bit of trouble there about the roughly 500 million euros that were allocated. And basically most of it is allocated to public buildings and only 20 million sort of thing for private buildings. And of course, now the mayors of Pozzoli, of Bacioli, they're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, right? So much for public buildings and then for private buildings, not much. And then they also complain, you know, there's a lot of illegal buildings, as it seems, that are built especially very close to the crater edges or in the crater. And, you know, they, some of them, you know, they're supposed to be torn down. But it seems that... In hindsight, the government is making too many of these structures legal. And that's what people are complaining about as well. Because on the one hand, the government is saying, we will issue a building stop for these communities that are in the red zone. So no more new apartment buildings, nothing new. But then they're basically grandfathering all these illegal buildings. So that's what people are upset about. They said, well, our communities need still need to have a chance to exist and to grow. Well, to grow, should they really grow? I don't really think so, but that's easier said than done if you live there and if, if you're in that community. Let me know what you think, guys. But it's always difficult if you don't live there, if you're not one of the insiders. To It's always easy to make a statement as an outsider. Um, so at least they're doing something. Um, we will see what happens. This new decree includes this ban on new buildings in this area that's currently affected by the Brady Sizem. And uh, there's a statement from Uzumechi um, again, and he says, the Council of the Ministers is giving more than it has to, than it has the duty to give to the Campi Flegre area. Campi Flegre, one of the most dangerous and complex volcanoes in the world. That's what he's saying. Um, he says the decision has not yet been made who this commissioner will be, but he says it will definitely be a technical figure, preferably um, with experience in human resource management and with organizational capacity and uh, but he says they will hurry. They will submit this name pretty pretty soon to the Campania region and to the local communities. Um, he says, and, and I think he's right, if you see that there's one earthquake swarm after the other. He says it's a decision that cannot be postponed at all because the amount of work presented in this new law decree requires a dedicated ad hoc structure to avoid time gaps. So he's aware that something needs to be done. And um, yeah, guys, I've read some comments and it's interesting comments and thanks for that. And of course, some of you are saying, well, you know, almost everyone in the world lives somewhere where it's dangerous, tornadoes, hurricanes, Cascadia Fault, Ring of Fire, volcanoes and stuff like this. And that's why we should not say that these people should evacuate. Well, the thing is, they're living in the red zone of Campi Flegre, a very dangerous volcano. And even if Campi Flegre has a small eruption, because it's so densely populated, it will be fatal for a lot of people, you know? there is no running away from this volcano. And the warning time might be very, very short, 
too short to make a successful evacuation. And that's what Muzumeci also has said. It's not feasible or it's not likely that an evacu evacuation in the, if there's a volcanic eruption, that the evacuation will be successful. And we know what that means. They're worried about the neighboring Vesuvius as well. There's roughly 700,000 people living in the red zone. And they tried in the past to offer them 30,000 euros if they move away, but there were not many takers because what can you buy for 30,000 euros? Nothing, right? Um, but it is definitely clear should Vesuvius have an eruption, that there's no running away. It'll be devastating. So compare this tornado. You usually have a weather warning and it's not one tornado is not devastating for hundreds of thousands, millions of people. There have to be many tornadoes, right? And there's storm shelters, hurricanes, you usually have enough warning. And uh, Cascadia Fault, yeah, that's a bad one. For those of you who don't know, this is a fault line that goes basically from Northern California all the way along the coast until Canada, Vancouver Island, basically there. So Cascadia Fault, if it fully ruptures, it will affect the whole west coast of Canada and uh, the US into Northern California. And they're saying everything that's west of I-5, that's that highway that basically goes um, all along the west coast into Canada, everything west of I-5 will be devastated from that earthquake. But yes, you know that it can come, you know it'll create a tsunami. There's tsunami evacuation routes on the coast. They're building like tsunami shelter towers on the coast. So they're preparing. And uh, whenever I'm at the coast, especially in like Oregon or Washington, um, I know, I'm aware of, I make myself aware of my surroundings where there's higher ground because you only, let's say you manage to survive the earthquake. You have eight to 15 minutes until the tsunami comes and it'll be a massive one. It can be a hundred feet. So you have to know how can I run within eight to 15 minutes to get to higher ground? We've all seen the tsunami in Japan. It's devastating. So the earthquake, yes, you don't want to be in a high rise in Portland, in Seattle or in Vancouver, Canada. You just don't want to. Um, or on a bridge or something. The bridges, I don't know if you live in that area, the Portland bridges that are the, the bridges that go into basically the Gresham area there, they scare me. They don't look like they're up to seismic coats with these long, thin posts and they're very, very high and tall and narrow it feels when you drive over them. Whenever I drive over them, I'm thinking, oh my God, I don't know. I hope no big earthquakes happening right now. But even then, um, if the Cascadia hits, yes, there'll be many fatalities, but probably less than in Campi Flegre, if because if it erupts, you don't have a chance. In an earthquake, if you are in a one-story home or if your home's up to codes, you might have a chance. And then the time after the earthquake, it's when most people get in trouble, especially in the big cities. That'll be fires, the big high rises, the glass will fall out. They're only built to survive. They're not built to be livable, especially not in Vancouver, Canada. So all the glass will fall out and then you, you know, you might fall out too if it's rumbling and if it's shaking and if there is no glass. These towers, the glass goes down to the floor. Where would you hold on to? Then your furniture is swinging around. And then if people in panic run out of the buildings, they might be hit by falling glass or stuff like this. And then there'll be fires. Yes. Uh, let me know what's your gut feeling. You know, what do you think is more survivable? I mean, I, I don't think Campi Flegre is survivable if you're in the if you're in the red zone. And speaking of, you know, they were mentioned volcanoes on the West Coast. Yeah, there's Mount St. Helens, there's Mount Rainier, Mount Baker, but there are not densely populated. People are not living on the, basically on the, where the volcano, on the, 
start off the crater or on the crater like they do in Campi Flegre and even Vesuvius. I mean, Vesuvius is a typical volcano that's very steep, but they're even at the feet of the volcano, highly densely populated, 700,000 people. So from Mount Rainier, Olympia, Tacoma, Washington, yes, lava will flow in there in some areas that are populated, but it's you have time to run away. So it is not fully comparable. You'd have to compare it to a Yellowstone eruption and you have to imagine that there's several hundred thousand people living right in Yellowstone National Park and then, then Yellowstone blows. So, but let me know, what's your risk assessment? Do you think it makes sense what I'm saying? <laughs> or do you think uh, that it's the same risk? Um, yeah, I'd be interested in that, guys. That was a quick update from Campi Flegri. Um, another update will probably follow about Iceland. What that volcano is uh, playing Catch Me If You Can with the Icelanders there. So check out my playlist about that as well. And guys, I hope you're doing great. Stay safe, be prepared. And uh, yeah, what can I say? I hope I'll see you very, very soon. Please leave this video a like. And if you're new here, subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.